Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today's July 19th, mid-July obviously. Uh, the heat of the summer has hit my garden, now it's actually a cool spell. But come mid-July, it's time to really clean out your garden, do some weeding, get it ready to let the crops that are doing well continue, get rid of the older crops, and really start thinking about starting your fall garden. So I'm just going to do a walkthrough, um, show you what I'm doing in there actually, um, pretty candidly. I'm um, also talk to you about saving peas. I pulled out some pea plants and talk to you about um, squash. I'm actually growing spaghetti squash and some tips that really can help you out. First I want to spin around here. One of the things that I talk about a lot is to start some plants in cups around July 1st. These are all winter squash. Um, I started some cucumbers and um, a scalloped um, zucchini type plant that I just put in a little bit earlier. And you can see that I pulled out some plants. I always start more than two seeds per cup so that I have a great opportunity of germination and then just pull one out. But these are ready to go into the garden so as I clear it out today I'll look for spaces for my um, winter squash to go into. So coming on down I'm doing a lot of weeding and I think I'll just start you know right here and there are some of the blue cups that I pulled out a um, scalloped zucchini, white scalloped, put in a cucumber plant right down there. This is dwarf kale that's been doing great. Um, originally I started out with a uh, fabric over it to keep out the white moths, but for the last at least four weeks I've been using neem oil and it really has no holes in it from, you can see the white moth fluttering around right over there. Zucchini plants doing well. I just turned that to grow down more down the base, but took out all the weeds. Coming across to my tomatoes, clean this plant up. It did have a little bit of leaf spot. There's another leaf right in there that has a mark. Let me get rid of that. Clean this plant up. I fertilized them with um, my liquid fertilizer. They also got some Epsom salt, another dwarf kale. This plant I'm leaving uh, just as it is. Those leaves are just dying out really from, well maybe there's some spots on there. I'm going to have to clean that one out too. The plants that don't have leaf spot or diseases like this one, I'm just letting die back. This is really coming from the heat. Basil's down in there. Coming around here, I pulled out all of my kohlrabi. Uh, the beets were pulled out. Some of them may have gotten bigger, but it's just really time to clear out them. And there's a spaghetti squash. Unfortunately, I broke my spaghetti squash vine and had to pick that one. But cleared out all this space, pulled up the peppers, pulled off any damaged leaves, and I'm really just, you know, clearing out everything, letting the air circulate through here. I did feed my beans a liquid fertilizer and really got that from Praxis. I don't know if you've ever checked out his YouTube channel, but it's very good. Um, the videos are longer than mine, but he's very interesting in just his approach to gardening and different things he does, and you can learn a whole lot from him. Over here I have, again there were beets and kohlrabi in there, I left one kohlrabi plant to grow because I think that one's going to mature. Basil seeds that I put in, some more beans, and you can see one of the things I did with my other spaghetti squash plant is I just cleared out the leaves that were right there. I just cut off the tip of the leaf, leave the stalk on there, this got fed, and I do put uh, dust on the stems of my plant. That will kill off vine borers. It also is a place where you can see there's no flowers, so there's no risk of really harming bees or anything like that. But that uh, organic, you can use organic dust. I do use seven dust. I'm not a 100% organic gardener, but the dust along there will stop vine borers from damaging your plants. And it will also be a place where the squash bugs walk onto and die off when they go to try and get up to your upper leaves. And you can see, there's the white moth in case you're ever wondering how you get cabbage loopers. It comes from that moth that just flew off. I can see right in here, those are uh, squash bug eggs. And you can see a couple up top there. But those are going to have to get removed by, and there's a beetle of some sort, which I don't know what it is. But by really taking the leaves off the bottom, growing some of your vine squashes, spaghetti squash, you can really maintain them a whole lot better. Two varieties of beans. I think those are burgundies over there. And this grouping, I forget what that is. But these are mid climbers, so these posts will really help them out. This is a Swiss chard, which 
bright lights variety which grows really well in containers so if you ever wanted to try a good leafy green that's great in stir fries and salads I really recommend chard and the bright lights varieties have some really really great colors I mean how often do you get to see that in a salad coming back around this way um, I got some peppers in there but this is my stevia plant that I grew. Um, it's the sweetener, and this plant can really be dried and used in, or used fresh in salsas and stuff like that. My cucumber plant is doing all right. My other uh, plantings of cucumbers are doing a lot better. This one did get beat up by insects, but it's holding its own. Over here are some red cabbages that I picked out, the last of my kohlrabi, and like I said, all the vegetables that were really planted in spring, um, maybe later May, are all coming out now. I'm getting ready for my fall garden. Pulled out the onions. Just going to let them dry out. One interesting thing is this is where I was growing my purple cabbage. And you can see, basically, here's a stump of one I just cut out. I leave the root stock in there, and then several weeks later, it will grow leaves back. I can use these in salads, and it probably will even form small heads. And you can see both of them doing it. And I'm going to you know, let those grow, and they will mature through August, be there when the cool season comes, and maybe I'll get some, you know, cabbages off of them. I'm also going to start seeds. More onions. These are my purple uh, potted peas, and you can see one of the purple pods there. And the way that I just collect seeds is just let them dry out on the vine. These have been drying out since really later June. Like I said, today is June 19th and you just pick off the pods that have dried on there and then you save these seeds and I will have these whoop, lost that one, for next year and you can see plenty of seeds so if you want to save peas just let them dry here's a container that I let dry they will you know to use the word again dry up there open them up put these in a bag, save them for next year, and you've, you've got pea seeds for next year. So that's pretty much what I'm actively doing today and tomorrow. Really clearing out everything that I can, getting uh, ready in my mind for the fall, and really taking care of everything, hoping that the diseases don't set in. These guys grow through August and into September, and I'm just going to hope for the best. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Please check out my blog at www.therustedgarden.blogspot.com. That's the white moth that lays the uh, green worms that eat holes in your cabbage and related plants. And again, check out my blog and my other YouTube videos. Thanks.